In this video, I will attempt to explain how to build the fill area, or what's commonly referred to when I worked in construction as California fill. I have no idea why, but either way, this is a video on cutting the fill area here. And this is actually something that I, I don't know if it's still difficult, but roofers, uh, the framers would come in and build sections of the roof like this. And then um, I would come in and do this. I can't tell you how many times I would do this on a job. Uh, you know, it's uh, complicated. And I'm, I hopefully I simplified it in this video. So we can use a variety of different ways to do this to build this, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a long video, so let's take the fill out of there. And first thing we are going to need to do is run a straight edge across the top of this so that we can get our marks to figure out where the point is for the fill. So let's go ahead and put a straight edge in there. You can use a level to um, double check it. Um, main thing would be to make sure that it is straight. If it's straight, but it's out of level just a little bit, um, I will leave it up to you whether you want to keep it straight or put a bow in it or create some type of a hump there. But basically we're gonna use a level and a straight edge. Line it up here. You can see we're basically lining it up with the blocks here. If you have a ridge, this is a truss roof. If you have a ridge, you can simply set it on top of the ridge. Another view of it there. Main thing we're trying to do is get a straight line over to here so that we can make a couple of pencil marks. There are our pencil marks and you can do this. You can make a mark here, mark here, mark the center, however you want to do it. Uh, you can put five or six marks. The more marks, the, the better sometimes. So that is how we get started with our figuring out where our ridge is going to go. The angle of the ridge, um, to figure it out, you can simply use a framing square and set the framing square, lay it down on top of the roof sheathing. And what I like to do is line it up with the number 12. This helps to provide me with the pitch of the roof, which will be useful later. Line the bottom up with the number 12, or you can line the top up. However, a lot of times you're not going to be able to line the top up because the board doesn't go far enough over. So line the bottom up with the 12. And here you can see that we have a 4 and 12 pitch. Zoom in here. There's our number 12 there is our number four. This will give us the angle here that we can use so that we can simply measure over from the rafter or the top of the ridge over to our marks to get the length of our ridge and then we can use the framing square to cut the angle. Another method you could use, and again, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible, you could simply lay a block two by six or a two by eight or a scrap piece of plywood down on top of the roof sheathing and simply trace it. Put the block next to the temporary ridge you're using for the straight edge and draw a line right across the top of it there and you will have a pattern for your ridge. Here's the block raised up. You can see the line here. If we just brought it straight down, this is the line we drew on the block. Let's go ahead and cut it again, same line. And then of course you can see here, if we flip it over, use the top of it, this is the same angle here for the ridge cut. Here's another view. I have the ridge already installed, lined up with the marks here. Again, you're simply going to measure from here to the point you made here and then transfer these measurements over to a to the ridge board you're going to cut and then use your pattern to create the line close up of the marks there and the ridge where you will be measuring it from and again you'll just nail these and you can toenail it or in nail it in and then you can nail it in a lot of times a lot of times you're not going to have any backing underneath here you might have a rafter on the side i'll leave that up to you if you want to put blocks underneath it and then nail into it or um, simply toenail it into the roof sheathing 
This is a part you can skip, but I like to do it so that I have a line for the roof sheathing, my measurements. So go ahead and grab a straight edge. And again, this can be done with a string. You can simply drive a nail in here and then pull the string over a chalk line or something until it lines up with the top of the rafters and then snap it. But uh, let's go ahead and use a two by four for a straight edge. We are going to set one edge up with the end of the roof ridge and the line here. And the other edge, we are going to move it until the edge here lines up with the rafter. So it's going to be sitting on top of the plywood. And we're simply going to move it over until it lines up with the edge of the roof rafters or trusses on the other side here. And then, of course, once that's done, we can simply draw a line across here or snap a line. And uh, sometimes you're actually going to have the rafters line up with the plywood, as you see here. And you can actually use these measurements over here if that actually happens. Just simply snap a line across here to the top of the ridge. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. After you get your line, it should line up with this and this point here. And if it's off by a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, that might not be a big deal. That could be a variation in lumber sizes or even your wall height, some type of wall framing or cuts, something like that. But I'll leave that up to you, what type of a perfectionist you are, whether or not you would need to fix that. But here you can see the line lining up here. And again, this is going to be a line we will use for our roof sheathing. Let's go ahead and put our fill back in to give you an idea. Here's where the line would be, but it's not going to be next to our nailer. We can see it here, a little bit farther away. But if we put a straight edge across the rafters, the straight edge should line up with this mark here. Okay, let's take a section away, focus on our nailers here. You can see here that they don't. we're not using this line here. We're actually going to use the rafters and the ridge. And we can use this as a guideline. We can always measure to make sure that we're still parallel. So you can see here where it lines up at the tip here instead of over here. And if you wanted to, you could shape a board, knock yourself out, shape something in. That cut would be definitely hard to do, but go for it if you can do it. The bottom here lines up with this, we can see. And if you want to try to figure out the angle for that, again, you can do it with a framing square. Simply lay a framing square up against the existing rafter, or you can use the plywood sheathing. You can see here, if I just move this framing square up to here, I could use the sheathing also. And then remember what the marks were. Here it looks like it's 12 and 3 quarters. And over here, it looks like it's 12, actually, um, at the bottom here. So 12, 12 and 3 quarters. Or no, I'm sorry, this is 12 and, yeah, it's 12 and 3 quarters, right below the 13. And then this would be the same mark. You would just simply transfer this to, the, to your nailer, and that should uh, give you your angle. Okay, if you know what the angles are here on the existing roof, um, let's say that it was built with as a 4 and 12 pitch, then you can use your framing squares to make the marks here, your uh, plumb and your level marks. So, but if you don't, just go ahead and nail a scrap piece of lumber. Again, you can use some plywood up against the roof rafter. Make sure that it's parallel at the top and you can simply use a level to mark the your pattern. This will be used as a pattern. You can see the mark there. Another level plumb the other way to make the other mark. And then of course you can see where they would line up here. This one here will be this cut. This one here will be this angle. Here's the pattern. I simply slid it up here to give you an idea how it's going to work. You can always use a speed square. Um, just put a regular, get, grab a regular rafter, um, put a plumb mark here, level across, and then uh, you can always use the angle there. And again, you can always use a framing square for this also. 
grab a framing square and check it out and see what the angle is. Again, trying to make it simple and easy, and sometimes this is going to be simple and easy. And don't forget, you, I've, I've came to plenty of roofs where it'll be a four and 12, but it's actually a four and a quarter and 12. Sometimes these blocks might be the best avenue to take. Now, when you're figuring out where the rafters go, if it's 16 inches on center, simply hook over the last rafter or truss hook your tape over and mark it 16 inches on center. And you can do the same at the bottom. Hook over the truss, these are all gonna be parallel. But uh, on larger jobs, it might not work as, as well if you have a truss that's bowed. So if you have a truss that's bowed and you're hooking over it, you might be off a half inch. That could create a problem for your roof sheathing, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to make sure that this board is actually straight or at least you're working with something straight. So this right here is what it would look like before you installed the rafter. Simply make a mark, hook over here, and then you'd simply move your tape measure up and then come over and then make another mark here. You can always put an X to show which side that the rafter is going to be going on. Now you can always install the rafters and then measure. So as we measured from here to here, 16 inches, we can also measure from here to here, 16 inches. Now to cut these, I went ahead, uh, your, your rafters for the fill will all be cut the same way. We will start with this one here and you will simply duplicate the process. This will be the plum cut and you will simply measure from here to here, which would be the same measurement as it would be from here to here. So this, again, you'd measure from the top to the long point. And you can always measure to the short point if you want to also. Sometimes it's easier to make cuts or you might only be able to make a cut if you measure from the short point. So if that's the case, you'll have to add an inch and a half to this to find out where the short point measurement would be. So if you're gonna measure from this side, don't forget you'll be cutting um, the angle this way. If you're going to be measuring from this side, you'll be cutting the angle this way. And I know that didn't make any sense, but if you're using a, a circular saw, it will. So we have a pattern here, a pattern here. We can use this pattern to make our plumb mark and this part to make the bottom cut. As we can see here, let's go ahead and take another view here. Now this is going to get an angled cut here and to figure out the degrees on that cut, you can probably look up a, look up a chart. Uh, feel free to, maybe I'll make a chart and I can attach it here. Um, we're going with a four and 12 and I believe a four and 12 pitch is 18 and a half degrees, might be just 18 degrees. But uh, this is what you would set the saw at. So whatever the existing pitch is here, and you're going to get this measurement again with the framing square. As I mentioned earlier, when you're trying to figure out your ridge cut, you're going to line the framing square up with the 12. And if it lines up with a four on the other side, and it's a four and 12 pitch, then you can figure out what the degree is for that um, pitch. And this is actually what the angle is going to be here. So, and you could always guess, if you don't know a lot about math, Grab a board, you know, start with one of these smaller ones and make a few cuts. You know, put a plumb cut on one end and then run it down. And then uh, just say, I'm gonna cut it at 20 degrees. You cut it at 20 degrees and it fits close enough, you're good. If not, add or subtract a few degrees until you get the cut that you want. In the last part of the video, I thought I would throw some pictures in of a project I did years ago. We can see the ridge here the spacing 16 inches on center. And of course, these are actually going to line up with the rafters on this side. This side right here is actually going to go straight across. This is not going to be a valley. On the other side, we are going to have a valley. And again, here's the existing or the, the rafters, the last rafters that have been installed. I had to shave down a section of the roof sheathing so that it would blend in. Um, had to put some shear panel in here. And then always use a straight edge to make sure everything is lining up. 
And you can see here we have our straight edge, but we have a little dip here. Um, you could, and we can see where here it's sticking up a little bit. Maybe I had to take a little more off of this to get this to work. But if you have a dip, um, something you could always add some nailers to the sides of these to raise them up. Um, if that'll work and that'll make the uh, engineer happy. If not, you might have to move the rafters. There's the ridge cut. Put a couple of toenails down again. Whether I put a block underneath here or not, I do not know. It looks like there is a block because I can't see the sheathing down here. But uh, who knows? So a couple of toenails on each side, maybe one down the center. Ridge again with our shear panel. Shear panel. Another after the shear panel is nailed. Now here you can see where the nailer blends in with the top of the ridge and with the roof rafters. And I don't have my mark here yet for my roof sheathing. One more thing I'd like to point out, it's common with California fill area, is that you cut off the ventilation. Make sure that you, if you sheet across it, that you cut a hole, some type of a hole where air can go through. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times uh, an engineer, an architect, they'll draw something and hey, we need roof sheathing all the way across here or shear panel. Well, if that's the case, make sure you cut a hole in here that you can, uh, where you can allow air to ventilate into the attic. Here's what it would look like finished. You can nail through the other side. You can nail these rafters here with in nails going from this side or you can toenail them. Uh, that would be a nail at a 45 degree angle. A nail at a, at a 45 degree angle would be good here. Here you can actually see the nail sticking through where I didn't angle it far enough. And then the nailer, of course, you can see that it's nailed into the existing roof rafters. Uh, I think this is a two by eight. It has three nails in there. That's how the, the nailers will attach to the existing roof or the roof, the main roof you're working with. Here's a nice row of nails here. So these rafters, again, they can in-nail, toe-nail. These can toe-nail. And then, of course, the fill will in-nail uh, in into the rafters. Another view here. We can see where everything is lining up. Nice job. And you can see here, I didn't, I just kind of cut this in like this. You know, uh, yes, I'm not a perfectionist. In my drawings, I am. But uh, something like this is, is fine with me. You know, cut it. Uh, it can always be a little steeper. You know, you can uh, cut cut a 45 degree angle or something, let's say, down here and then line this up. Hey, if it works, um, great. If not, something like this, I don't think you're going to have a problem with. Plus that, the inspector's never going to see it. So what can I say there? Once you cover it with plywood, that's the end of that. So uh -oh, I'm let, letting my true colors out here. So that's it for this video. I hope it helps and I will stop right there. It has been long enough. And it is off to the next video.